The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Asmodee. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Megan the Daughter. And today we are playing Mysterium by Libelund Asmodee. Uh, this is the third game in our series of spooky games. The reason why this is spooky is because the game actually tells you in the rule book that it takes place on Halloween night. And this is about a ghost trying to uh, let mediums know about who killed them, where they were killed, and with what weapon. Sounds a lot like Clue the game, the board game, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, except this game is obviously a little different, and I just want to say that the artwork on the box is awesome. Mm -hmm. I think that really looks cool. But we are going to play this in a two-player setting. So one person will be the ghost. Megan has already decided that she wants me to be the ghost. So yes. Most of the time, this is the only time you're going to hear me talk yeah. throughout the video. Otherwise, it's going to be Megan, and she'll talk about things uh, as she's trying to work through the process. Mm -hmm. Deductive reasoning, just like Sherlock. Yes. So we already have the uh, game set up, but we're going to change the camera angle uh, so you can kind of basically play on Megan's side and kind of see how things are going during the course of the game. We already have it set up. And how we did that was we have our row of characters, locations, and weapons. And what we do is we have decks for each of those. Like here is the character deck here. And what we do is we shuffle these up. And in a two-player game, we select uh, four from here just randomly. And you'll notice that they have numbers on the top. That's because the ghost also gets a matching deck. And when these cards are selected here, then the ghost goes through there they pick out their four, they shuffle them up, and in this case, they'll pick two um, randomly, you know, after they shuffle, and they'll put them in their game board. They're going to do the same thing with the locations and the weapons. And I'll show you what the location cards look like there. There is the normal ones, and here are the ones for the ghost. And for reasons unknown to me, the weapons are this itty bitty little deck mm -hmm. of cards. Not really sure why they did that other than maybe they needed the space in the box. <laughs> but uh, the ghost cards of those are the regular size cards. Yeah. So, Megan, I am going to show your people okay. and you can introduce who they are. So, mediums. basically, Megan is going to be controlling two of the mediums. Her first one is this lady with pink. Jessalyn Smith. Her specialty is tarot reading, and she's American. She was married at a very young age and is profoundly bored. Okay. And your other one is the lady in red. Alma Salvador. Her specialty is pendulum divination, and her nationality is Spanish. She was orphaned as a young child, brought up in a covenant, and has supernatural instincts. Okay. And I want to point out that these are actually envelopes. Yes. Because... Uh, when Megan gets one of these, or guesses which one of these is correct, uh, I will let her know as a ghost that it is correct, and she will put that card inside of the envelope. Now, she's going to do that for each of the things. She has to be able to advance basically all the way up and guess all of those, and she only has seven hours, which represent turns, in order to do that. So there's not a really a lot of time, and I would say that all the games that we've played, we've won half? Yes. Yeah. So, I think we've both lost at least one game each. So how the ghost is going to try to get uh, the correct person to guess the correct uh, suspect, they have a series of vision cards. Megan, you want to kind of tell them what the vision cards are like? The vision cards are very weird and like Alice in Wonderland-ish. And that's how I kind of have to use them to describe them. So this is one of the vision cards doesn't really tell you much about how you're supposed to guess that this person did what in this room with this weapon. You kind of have to be able to paint the rest of the picture. And ironically, this is like a paint easel with flowers and a forest. 
but the trees are the paint brushes and you kind of just have to guess what are you looking for as the ghost that's trying to communicate with the medium that one specific item in the card and that might be something that is on the character's yes. card it might be maybe a, a uh, occupation that the character mm -hmm. has or it could just be the general color because sometimes yeah. these vision cards are so whacked out mm -hmm. that they're the only way to really contribute them to a, a card that we're trying to guess here on the table is simply by color mm -hmm. or sometimes it's a little bit easier like if you're trying to guess the kitchen you might use that vision just because of the food so it kind of depends on the different types of cards but they're all very weird now the ghost is going to also be able to, they're going to have seven of these cards. Mm -hmm. And every time that they give a card to a medium, they're going to be able to replace it and draw back up to seven. seven. Because we can give them as many cards as we want. Yeah. Um, but trying to get them all linked together for one uh, section, because that's all you're giving clues for is just one section until they move on to the next section. Mm -hmm. So chances are you're probably only going to give one or two cards uh, at a time. But if the cards that you have in your hand just totally, you, there's nothing you can do to work with them, then you, you have this crow token, and you're going to place that on top of the ghost screen. Mm -hmm. And in a two-player game, you can do this once per round, uh, and that lets you discard all the vision cards in your hand and okay. draw a new seven back up. The hourglass that we have, once each investigator has, or medium, has their own uh, vision cards, then the ghost flips the timer, and they have the uh, the mediums have that much time in order to take their crystal ball and put it on a character that they are making their guess for. Remember, the ghost can't talk, so all they're going to do at the end of that is basically tell them, yes, you got it right, or no, you didn't get it right. And he can do that for uh, either one. Mm -hmm. So after the end of the turn, then the clock advances. over here advances uh, one hour. So like I said, we only have seven hours in order to win the game. Yep. We're going to change the camera angle so that you're basically sitting with Megan and you're going to be able to see how the, all the action unfolds. Okay, so as the ghost, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get behind the screen. I've got everything set up on my end. There is also a soundtrack that you can download that is about 50 minutes long and we are going to have that playing in the background just as kind of uh, some spooky ambiance sound. say that's where pink is. Those are my guesses. So yellow is right. Okay, so I'll keep that and then move yellow up there. And then pink. What's pink? Pink is wrong. I kind of figured. Okay. So not the nun. Clock advances. So now the guess for yellow is for the location, and pink is still on the person. Okay. So... That's that guess. Oh my gosh, I have no idea. And then, location. Okay. I don't know. Okay, um, so an art easel, it says stilts, oh gosh, it has colors in it, so, and I know it's not the nun, and buttons and all, oh golly, I'm gonna say it's this lady, I don't know, and then we got like some steampunk thing going on. Gosh, I don't know. Um, 
metal. I don't really see it a lot. There's like pots and pans, I don't know. There's like gears and stuff in like the garage or something. Oh god. I'm gonna go with yellow going to like the shed or something. That's gonna be my guess. Pink is wrong. Okay. Wait. Did you mean, sorry, so no. Pink, pink is wrong. Okay, so yellow is wrong too. Okay. So if I at least process on the elimination, I know what pink is. But I don't know how you're getting that at all. And yellow is not a kitchen. So we're already on turn three. So I only have four more guesses. And that's what makes it hard, because you gotta try to figure out exactly what are you trying to get me to go for. And I have no idea. Okay, so this one is a coat with little animals and a girl on it. Okay. I just don't know how you're trying to get me to guess that it's the guy, but obviously you're getting me to go for the guy in the deer stalker. Because that's the only option left is the deer stalker. So sometimes that is helpful, just process up on the elimination if you can't guess whatever the heck the visions are. Because I really don't know there's buttons in all of them. I guess that's something, I don't know. I don't see buttons in that one, but... Okay, and this one is a mouse with a top hat. Okay, if you want to start the timer, okay, so obviously pink is the guy, we know that much, and then, oh gosh, so there's like, I'm thinking that the rat are going with food, because I, I know we've made the reference of rat and ratatouille, so that could either be the kitchen or the storage area, I don't think like the creepy dark room is an option. But since there's like metal and gears and all, I'm kind of leaning. I'm going to go for the kitchen. I think that's where you want me to go. So that's going to be my guess. So yellow is right. Okay, so that was good. So that's good. And pink is right because that was the only one left. So that's good. So now pink needs the location, and yellow is the weapon, as we go on to the fourth power here. I'm just going to put those for now so we can focus on those. Okay, so yellow has blades and like a whip, I don't know how to pronounce that weapon starts with an S, a scythe or something. So um, I think it's either the knife or the hammer is my guess on that one. I've got two shots, so that's something. And then pink. Oh, okay, so crow. So you're going to get rid of the seven and get new. This has like a bluish background, so you could be wanting me to go for the rope that's in here too. Oh gosh, I don't know. I don't think the dumbbells are an option. But there's the brown. So it could, I don't think it's the dumbbells though. So I'm thinking it's either rope or the um, knife. Oh, okay. Okay then. That's a very ornate rat. With red and dark colors. And there's red on there, and that's kind of dark. And there's like creepy creatures. So that could be something. 
but if it's a rat, we could also be going back for the food. And that kind of looks like cheese, so it can be for that too. I think we're gonna go with food guests and go for that. And say it's like the food pantry, and then for the weapon. I don't know. I feel like you're trying to get me to go for the knife just because I like the blade, so I'm gonna put that on the make the razor. Okay, so pink is correct. Cool. Okay, so that's good. And yellow is on the knife for the blade. That is right. Okay, cool. So yellow is completely done. So that's good. So now we're just trying to narrow down the last weapon. But yellow's good. I, I definitely know the dumbbells are out. Could you be getting me to go for the rope or the hammer? There's like an arrow in like a lake with like a flag to it, a Christmas tree, a lighthouse, a red sled, and some tree trunks. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I think the rope, the color of the rope looks more blue than that. The hammer looks a bit more purplish, so I'm gonna go with the rope for pink. And it's good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we have sets narrowed down. So the other two options are gonna be put in a set that the ghost has decided. So, and that's gonna be a final set to make up how we decide who the actual killer is. So this just kind of narrowed it down so we can have more of an option to look at. So there are the locations. I don't know how you want that set up. And then the people. And then here is this set. the sets so that way we know what um because he'll put a number on top of like the archway and that will be the number of the um pairing that he's picked oh, wait, so this is good on pink and okay okay so uh, chef the dumbbells And that, okay, so that will be set number three. And then four, ooh, creepy nut. Okay, so now we have sets established. So the ghost is gonna put a number on top of the archway and that's gonna be what the final whodunit basically is. So the ghost has been down the number that corresponds to the set, and that is the final person. So now the ghost is going to give me three visions that will correspond to one set, and I have to figure out from those three cards who did it. So, okay. So we have a cannon with some fireworks, like a fan of the Apple guy on a train in the west, and some birds. Okay, so, huh, I don't know, okay, there's red in this, so that could go pretty much everything, everything has red in it, some way or shape or form, have the cannon, which could go with the gun, 
here. That would be something. I'm not really sure with the train where I'm supposed to go with that. Birds. Am I supposed to make, to look for birds in this? There's birds in this one. I don't know how everything matches up. I don't think I've ever been this stumped. Well, this is kind of eerie in color. I don't know if we could go for that. And if I go for birds, I could go for the one up there. I don't know. I really don't. I wish you could give more hints than this. I don't know. Probably gonna get it wrong. Because I'm really between these two up here. I'm gonna say it's this one. It's my final guess. So. It was number one, so it was here, so I lost. So I failed. Yeah, and now the rules say that uh, if you fail this, then they, they have to wait until the next Halloween in order to try to communicate with the ghost uh so this ghost uh, soul is going to stay in torment at least yeah. another year but we'll explain the cards uh how i chose these this was a weapon so i'm trying to get megan right to think about that. the gun there yeah uh there's one guy and three women and this is a guy in the card so i was trying to to point her towards the guy i never thought of that and the birds kind of uh go along with um kind of the whole hunting aspect I, I was nowhere near that at all. I probably, sh I get it now, but like at the time I was like, I had no idea. I thought you were going with the color and then like the birds and all. I had no idea where you were going at all. So now let's get to our review and what we think. Okay, Megan, do you want to go first on your thoughts on the game? I really enjoy it. I think it definitely takes um, Clue to a whole new level on the aspect that it is very similar to Clue, but it just ups it up because you are completely lost. You can't just keep guessing and looking at your partner's hand to try to figure it out. You, Your partner's hand is these weird visions and you have no idea what they're trying to get you to get. Yeah, sometimes they're, they're a little easier uh, We've had some really easy guess. ones where I'm like, oh, that's obviously it. But yeah, I mean, it is luck of the draw sometimes on the ghost hand on what kind of cards come up. But I really enjoy it. I love the whole um, backstory on it. I think the artwork's cool and all. I just love the whole concept of the ghost not being able to talk. And the ghost setup is pretty cool, and we're going to show you that in a little bit. But, I mean, it's fun to be both sides. I like being the ghost sometimes more. I feel like it's less stressful because I get like, I don't know how to do it, and I don't want to lose. But it does show, you know, it is hard, and you will lose, but it's also fun at the same time. So, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I really like this game, too. This was one, you know, I was kind of lukewarm about. You know, when we were at Gen Con, people were buzzing about it. I was excited. And I was just, I, I really didn't get it. Um, and even some friends of mine who were actually were volunteering with Asthma Day, um, they were like, oh, this game is amazing. And it was one of those where I think I had to play it, give the game, you know, a chance to kind of see what it was like, you know, before really making a final determination on it. And I was surprised at how much I really did like it. Now, 
granted, we've only played this uh, with two players. Yeah. With more players, uh, I think it's going to be a lot neater. And there's a couple of, of uh, differences that you incorporate when you have more than three players. And I want to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I do want to point out that if you have a strong connection with someone, uh, yes. coming up with the visions, I think, really helps a lot. Uh, or, or matching them up. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to show you, trying to find the, uh, the ones in the game that Megan and I played the other day. We immediately knew what they were, so that definitely helped. And why am I not finding it? I'm, I'm looking for the, uh, the one with the wedding dress. That's the location. Dumbo. Oh yeah, it's the, it is the... Uh, it's the attic. Dumbo, yeah, I guess I am stupid. Okay, so in a game that Megan and I had the other day, we had uh, this as one of the locations I was trying to get her to guess. Now, for those of you who have been on the Haunted Mansion ride at uh, Disney. Disney World, you're definitely going to recognize this scene. It's an attic. It's got a wedding dress. So there is an actually a, uh, a vision that I think goes perfectly with this for those of you with a mind for Disney, mm -hmm. and that is this here because you see things are coming out of the painting, the guy is running down the hallway. This looks like another area of the Haunted Mansion. Uh, you ace that one right away, oh, and, yeah. and I knew you would because that is one where, like I said, it helps mm -hmm. when you have a connection and you can kind of, you know. You can gauge what you, the other person might get. You can really match up a vision well, so. And that was um, good with me because like, with your rat, I'm like, I was assuming rat in the kitchen with ratatouille, just because we've made that reference before when trying to connect them as well. Right. Um, so hopefully those of you that have been to Disney World before and have been in Haunted Mansion, uh, you can definitely see the similarities in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about the, uh, the way the four, five, six, and seven player game function and what is really different. Everything we showed you is the same with the exception of a few minor things. Each player in their color is going to get little tokens here. They look like Ouija boards. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are six of these. Three have the check mark and three have the X. So what you're going to do when the other players make their determination uh, on what they think or who they think uh, the card is going to be, then they are going to either place one of these next to it that says, yeah, I think you're right, or they're going to place one of these which says, no, you're wrong. And depending on the person, you if, if you get it right, mm -hmm. and I picked for you to get it right, I'm going to get a clairvoyancy token. And what that means is I, each player has one of these little markers in their color. Don't throw them away, because we almost did. Yes, when you unbox <laughs> this, be very careful. Do not throw yes. those away. And the clairvoyancy track is up here. That's these numbers here that we didn't use in our game. So when you are correct in assigning one of these, uh, and also I will tell you that... Once you use these, regardless of your if you're right or wrong, they are going to go out of the way. Okay, mm -hmm. they're out of the game for the rest of the time. But that's going to give you a point each time you move up in a section uh, where you gain or you uh, correctly guess correctly. You're going to get a point too. And the clairvoyancy points, uh, if you look, this is for four players here. If we flip this over, whoops, you you're going to see that. This is for more players. So you can see that the track is a little different. Here's zero to seven all the way up there. This is the low end, this is the medium end, and this is the high end. When you have uh, four or five players, here is the low, here's the medium, and here is the high. Now, the way that comes into play, whoever has a higher amount at the end, you saw that I gave Megan three cards uh, for the, the final, final part. Uh, depending on where your clairvoyancy marker is going to be, if you're in the upper section, you're going to get to see all three cards. If you're in the middle, you only get to see the first two. And if you are in the bottom part, you're only going to get to see the first one. And you're all going to vote at the end, and you're going to take your little envelope here, and you will put your marker, and the, each of these markers on the back side have a number, as you can see, one through six. And you are going to put that in your envelope, and that will be your vote to who you think the final culprit is. Mm -hmm. And that will determine who is the winner or if you all lose. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to think if there's any other differences between the other 
the other game. Um, I'm sure I'm probably leaving some out, but I don't want to ruin everything uh, for those of you that get the game and see it, um, you know, and read through the rule book. The rule book is really cool. I mean, they have they they've laid things out. Uh, some of the things I actually had to go out on Board Game Geek and look up because they weren't as clear, uh, or I had missed it in the rules. But uh, the backstory that they have on there, we're not going to read it, but the backstory is really kind of cool. And just show it. I mean, it's very in depth and it's very, it seemed great. Yeah, and each of the investigators or the or the mediums have their own bio and everything. And Megan read off the the first two that she's got there. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool how they theme it and everything. So the last thing I really want to show you is the ghosts screen here. This is cool. This is what makes it fun to be a ghost. Yeah. Now this is really high production value here in this game. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I mean, when you have more than two players, obviously you can match up the different colors with the uh, the cards. I just use the middle two here, uh, but there are you know everything's color coded and marked so that you can see you know we put the uh, the person there, the location and the weapon, mm -hmm. uh, and there's little plastic slots that the cards slide in. But uh, let me just flip this over and just take a look at the artwork on this. Mm -hmm. I mean that is really slick. Um, that is also very reminiscent yes. of the Haunted Mansion mm -hmm. movie uh, with Eddie Murphy, which we actually kind of like. I yeah. mean, I know it got ripped, but we really kind of like that. Um, the little clock that you get is really cool. Yeah. Uh, you put that together. The cardboard on that is really sturdy. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I mean, everything about the production of this mm -hmm. game is, is top notch. Yeah. Even the little crystal balls that you get. Uh, everybody gets one in their color. Uh, you know, nice sculpted cool. plastic. Yeah, it's very nice. And then finally the insert. Let yeah, me show that. Nice. Uh, very good, very functional insert. Everything has its own place. Uh, once we put it, pulled everything out, I kind of had to figure out how it went back in, but yeah, it, it's not that, that difficult. Uh, but it's really good. Things don't go flying around all over the place. All this stuff uh, stays where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely a really good game. Uh, you can play this any time of the year, but since this does take place on Halloween, this is going to be one that I think we'll probably pull out every year during the fall. During yeah. the fall, yeah, it, it really kind of has that uh, that feel. So, anything else you want to talk about, Megan? Uh, with the artwork, and I have to point this out as the Whovian in me. Which doctor does that look like without the amazing hair? Yeah, that's totally David Tennant. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no no ifs, ands, or buts. So, I mean, we can link it to Doctor Who. We every, can link it to everything. Well, every Whovian, I think, are, they're immediately going to think that that's David Tennant mm -hmm. right there. But yeah. Oh, the other thing is with the crow token, uh, you know, that's right out of Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, the raven. The raven, Not yes. Not a crow, it's a raven. Well, I, I think they actually call it a crow in the rule book, but it does but look like a raven. In Edgar Allan Poe, it's a raven. That is correct. Um, so... I guess that's all I got to say about it. Yeah. Good, good game. Great game. Uh, it's coming out real soon. If it's not already by the time I put this out, I think it's mass produced at, or mass marketed at Essen. So, uh, you know, I know that at Gen, Gen Con they had very limited numbers for this. And they were we, out immediately. We, we couldn't even uh, demo, demo this at Gen Con because it was so popular. That'll do it. Yeah. And we've got one more spooky game left in the month. So stop back by next week and we will catch you guys next time. Bye. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.